switches around against Creighton there and see Trey Alexander getting ready to go. 14 points per game and wins this season. 31.6 field goal percentage in those losses. Creighton trying to win six in a row. Can't have that much hair on your thighs. It's almost <laughs> impossible anyway. That I saw that. UConn won the game, by the way. Hey, uh, Villanova, uh, Creighton about to go on our air here on Fox. Uh, who's going to win this game and why? I'm picking the Creighton Blue Jays for, uh, uh, you know, defensively they are finally turning into the top ten team that we thought and led by Ryan Kulkbrenner. You know, I think their defensive formula, Donnie, is pretty simple to me. They want to run you off the three-point line and force you to take tough shots over Kulkbrenner. And you saw what Creighton did last week against Xavier. Xavier only attempted 14 threes, and Ryan Kulkbrenner had five blocks. And what does Villanova want to do? They want to shoot threes, and they're not going to be allowed to do that. Anymore. Yeah, they're not going to be allowed to shoot threes. They, they also aren't going to be allowed to go one-on-one. Very good defenders. They only average 11 assists a game, which is very un- Villanova-like. You know, normally they shot fake, they find guys, they just, they're not built that way. Uh, a, a lot of what they're doing has to rely on Cam Whitmore and his just his God-given ability. But this is a team that not only Nova, but I think Kyle Neptune, they really, really need that, just for their morale. That, I was going to uh, ask, now that Justin Moore is back, is there still enough time to get things together going into the Big East tournament? It looks like they got to actually win the Big East tournament in order talk, to get into the When you the talk to Kyle Neptune, yeah. he says, yes, that's always an, an option, but we're not thinking about the tournament right now. And we're, we're thinking about am. building a new culture <laughs> and, and really for, for a new coach. He has to. At some point, he has to separate away from Jay Wright in terms of mm. their coaching styles. And listen, you're going to take some lumps when you do that. Well, Creighton finally living up to expectations once again. Five straight, eight of ten. See if they can keep that going at home against Villanova. Game coming up, you get to see one of the most talented freshmen mm. in the nation, Cam Whitmore. Cam Whitmore is built different. 6'7", 225 pounds. He's just 18 years old. That's a man, boy. Mm. Boy, man. From the CHI Center here in Omaha, Nebraska, this is Fox Primetime Hoops, where tonight we've got a battle out of the Big East as the Villanova Wildcats come into town to take on the Creighton Blue Jays. The standings in the Big East Conference. Xavier, top of the table. Shaw Miller has them rolling 11-2 in conference play. Creighton not far behind. Villanova in the middle trying to make a serve. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson along with the All-American Jim Jackson. And welcome to Omaha, Nebraska, folks. Good game here. Villanova got a boost when Justin Moore, their point guard, returned after being out for a year with an Achilles injury. So they're looking up. As for Creighton, they've won five straight games and are looking like the team that at one time was ranked number seven in the nation. Health. Health has been the reason why both teams have kind of sputtered a little bit, but now they're recovering. So we get a sense and feel of how good both can be. Villanova, great to see Justin Moore back in the lineup, trying to get his timing back for Creighton. Caught Brenner begins and ends, and Trey Alexander is a special part of that. All right, the starting lineups are sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Jimmy, who jumps out at you? Between the Wildcats and the Blue Jays. For Nova, Eric Dixon must stay out of trouble, but also stretch the floor, force Kalkbrenner out of the lane. And Coach McDermott really wants to speed up the pace. No better partner than Ryan Nemhart to do that. We've got a great officiating crew tonight, folks. Jeff Anderson, who last year did the national championship game. Mike Roberts and Tony Chiazza. Kyle Neptune in his first year replacing a legend 38 years old the guy replacing the guy he was 16 and 16 at fordham one year ago meanwhile coach mack greg mcdermott 58 years old he's led creighton to seven straight 20 plus win campaigns including the program's first week 16 and 70 since 1974 in 2021 so here we go creighton in white with the venues to play and return. And that's the mental part. The injury itself, he's done a lot in everything right to get it repaired where he's fine. It's, it's in between the years. He's speaking about in between the years. The Trey Alexander 
can knock that shot in often and early on Gino that bleeds into your bench you're not as deep and it does affect you but now they're back healthy here's Kalk Ritter quick turn and he lays it up and in Ryan Kalk Ritter 7 one from St. Louis, Missouri. Had 16 on. Now Daniels bounce pass to Dixon. He's got Cuff Ritter on and the big fella with the first block of the game. That's where size matters. That time Cuff Ritter able to size Dixon up. Two hands straight in the air using that height. Taking away that opportunity inside. Him hard off the bounce. Kicks it out. Alexander. And it's good. Ray Alexander. Stroking it to start. He's got six points. The front rim. Nimhart snatches it. This time, Paluma, no good. Offensive rebound. Creighton. Nimhart. The floater. Oh, there's Barkwitter. Soft hands. Beautiful pass. Blue Jays take a 10 7 lead. Arizona 81-79. They've been playing well, but then Hawk Brenner got hurt. They lost all three games when he was hurt. And it's taken them some time to find themselves. They come into this one on a five-game winning streak. And some of their best basketball. Nimhard. And he knocks down a two. His foot on the line, and that levels the game at 12. It'll be a work. That's when the thought process has to just be natural. Villanova really digging in on defense. Seven points for Moore. 14-14. Nimhard. Guarded by Slater. Slater are a lot taller and longer than Nimhard. Now Shireman. The lefty gunner. And he knocks it down. Baylor Shireman had 10 against Georgetown on Wednesday. He's at happening in the NBA. Dallas to New York. And now look. Should have been in an all-star. Archie Diakono on that Knicks team too. Shireman trying to get his shot off, two to shoot, Alexander on the bang, and it's good. Up top, Whitmore, trying to get into the act, and he almost turned it over and did. Alexander the other way, he's got Cox Ritter running with him. Now Shireman, he stripped, picks it up, inside, nice time. And Cox Ritter with the easy lay-in, 8-0 run. For the offensively by Villanova by not settling for a tough shot. 6.48 to play. Alexander's been hot. He's got nine points, three threes. Kaluma backs up, takes a three, and buries it. Arthur Kaluma. 25-17, his first basket of the game. Talking to Coach McDermott, what I, I got the half shot. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nimhart hits it off Shire. And the weave up that. Kaluma. Nice. Duck down. And Cock Ritter finishes at the basket. Nine assists on Whitmore. He'll take a three. In and out. Bach Brenner got it off the rim, held it in the air, and just lays it in. Hey, Gus, that's what 7 1 paid. Alexander on the pick and roll. Gets to the cup, the pump counted in the five. Welcome to the Jeep Halftime Report, sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Creighton getting it going in the first half against Villanova. Ryan Kalk Jenner doing his thing, the tip in right there. One of two players with 12 points. They're up by eight at the half over Villanova 35-27. Mike Hill, Donnie Marshall hanging out with you. Uh, when we had Steve Lavin here. He's like the Omaha games, yep. dollar beer night right. in Omaha. He would love this game because uh, Creighton doing a really good job of sharing the sugar as we take a look at the halftime <laughs> highlights sponsored by Jeep. Nine assists on their 12 made field goals. And what makes this so good is that their spacing is wonderful. Obviously, they're sharing it. They're throwing it to a spot only called Printer can catch it. But look how spaced out they're keeping this Villanova defense. Mm -hmm. No one getting in each other's way. Now you have to decide who are you going to help. Nine assists. Listen, this is the, a Creighton team that five players average 11 plus points or more. Only two right now, but that's okay because Villanova really doesn't know 
where to be. They only have three assists. They're not going to be able to, to beat Creighton guys off the dribble. They're, they're, we talk about their offense and Kalkbrenner, but defensively, Creighton is starting to figure things out. Well, only three assists. They only got nine made field goals. Nine for 23, shooting 39%. Creighton doing the job on both. And able to get up and under. Trey Alexander. Third foul on Slater. Dim hard. Inside they find Bob Ritter right at the basket and he lays it in. What beautiful recognition of the switch. Archie Diak and those switches right here. Justin Bobo, watch Cork Runner. As he seals inside, that gives him enough space to operate. And where's the pass? It's right where Cork 734. Brayton a little flat to start this second half. Stop and start Nimhart. Alexander, who was hot in the first half. Inside, caught Brenner wide open. How do you lose a seven foot one guy? By not communicating early on the switches when you'll be in. Of course, if you win it, automatically you're in. So Wildcats inbounding the ball and they turn it over out of a timeout. Not something that Kyle Neptune wants to see from his squad. Seven turnovers. Them hard on the reverse, and he's fouled by Archie Diakono. Excuse me, by Hausen. His third. The one thing we didn't talk about this Creighton team, they do an excellent job, guys, when we've seen it in occasions of playing defense without fouling. I know that Villanova right now has about eight, ten free throw attempts, but on the year, teams only average about 12 and a half free throw attempts per game. For, for free. Nimhart, three for three from the line, 83% free throw shooter. The Big East freshman of the year last season. Because you don't have the threat at the point guard position to step behind the shooter. Teams don't have to honor that and play it a lot differently than what we've seen in the past, and hence is not as effective of a weapon for Villanova. Oh, Brenner. Up top, Alexander. Pure. He's really playing well tonight. Largest lead of the game for Creighton. 46-36. And a timeout called by Nova. 14-19 to play second half. Ten-point lead for the Blue Jays. Villanova, Kalkbrun. 8-0 run for Villanova to make it a 46-44 game. Nimhard looking inside. As we approach the 11-minute mark, down the lane, Alexander, and one! The growth in this game, Trey Alexander, is to recognize that this is a drivable opportunity. Patience, decisiveness, and then once again, Gus, an upper body strength to be able to finish through the contact. Trey Alexander was the Oklahoma Gatorade Player of the Year coming out of high school. Average 24 points a game. Ritter back on the floor. Kaluma, Nimhard, Shireman, and Alexander. Here's Alexander in the corner with a look. And buries it. This kid's been brilliant. He's got 21. And Creighton's back on top. Inbound the ball. Oh, oh he's wide open. Kaluma's wide open. And Alexander open. And kill it. This kid lighting it up tonight. 23 point. 124 to go. Nemar to the bucket. Up and in. And Creighton goes up 60 to 58. Here comes Justin Moore. Drives. Kicks it out. Kicks in for the lead. Got it. 61-60. Dicks out, folks, so, so they can see him. 26.2 to go. For clocks. Justin Moore inside. Kicks it out. Daniels driving. Poked away. And he 
turns it over. With 12.1 to go. Alexander with the poke. Gate up there, you just got to be stronger in this situation. But that's excellent defense by Trey Alexander. In late game situations, there are not going to be a lot of fouls called unless it's something. But when you needed a defensive stop, the ability for Creighton once again, Gus, to play defense without fouling. So with 12.1 seconds remaining, Alexander at the line. First one good. Still a lot of time. Villanova with a timeout left. Second one goes. Villanova will call their final timeout. The Villanova, Slater, Moore, Dixon, Daniels, and Whitmore. Moore's going to have to go the length of the floor. Eight seconds. They kick it out. Dixon a three. Air ball. The Shire to... And Coach Mack, a happy camper. Let me explain the thing behind this. Cal Neptune knew that if, if it was a switch or not, that Kalkbrenner was going to play behind the pick if Eric Dixon came off, that he was going to get a look. See, right here now, but what did Coach Mack do? He put Kaluma on Eric Dixon and hid on the baseline and Villanova didn't recognize it in 2012 that Villanova has had 12 plus losses this part of the season they finished 13 and 19 that year a lot of injuries they'll get Jordan Longino back shortly and that free throw goes down for Shireman 1.4 to go Daniels at 3 and that's it. Creighton holds on. 66-61, the final. The Blue Jays have now won six in a row. For Jim Jackson, this is Gus Johnson saying so long from Omaha. We'll send you to Mike Hill in Los Angeles right after this. You've been watching Fox Prime Time Hoops. Mike Hill and Donnie Marshall back in our L.A. Studios post-game wrap. We just saw a quadruple better of basketball here on Fox throughout the day. Capped off by Creighton getting the win, 66-61 over Villanova. Their 15th win this season. They're sixth in a row. Trey Alexander had 27 points, but it was a big steal at the end and free throws that made a big difference in this one. I think it's it's time to really start giving Creighton some love for their defense. You know, and obviously Kalkman is a huge part of that. But when you see guy, guards stepping in and guys just buying in, it's not just that offensive team that we remember of a few years back. This play for Caleb Daniels, you can't just